Hello, good day YouTube, JB from Oz here. Uh, today's video is a little bit different from what I'd normally talk about. It's an area that I have no formal training or expertise within. It is not financial advice, it is not legal advice. It's purely recounting an opinion about something which is something I hold freely on my own. It doesn't represent my work, it doesn't represent anybody else. Okay, having said that, the question on my lips this morning is, is foreign exchange trading a scam? Now, a friend fairly close to me recently um, decided to respond to a Facebook ad from a company that was advertising foreign exchange uh, market services and decided to invest some money, uh, initially $1,000. Then extending out to seven and a half thousand dollars, and eventually out to twenty-two and a half thousand uh, dollars Australian dollars. So not nearly as valuable as the uh, Freedom dollars in the US or anything like that, but a significant sum of money nevertheless. And long story short, within a couple of days, had lost it all. Um, so first observation of that is. Uh, foreign exchange trading like any share market like any thing where you're putting your money at risk to earn returns is risky and if you can't afford to lose it don't do it uh, that's I guess the same thing with gambling or any other sort of risk reward strategy you might have to turn a small amount into a big amount uh, kind of like you know how to make a small fortune historically the best and fastest way to do that is to start with a big fortune and buy a boat. Yeah, wacka wacka. So, in any case, the idea of trading shares or exchange or margin trading, which I think is more specifically what we're talking about here, is um, an idea that you can put a bet on which way the market is going to go. And essentially, that's what it is. It's, it's your, your probabilistic bet that you believe you understand what a million or a billion different individuals are going to do, individual share trading programs, uh, algorithms, all that sort of stuff, people with a hell of a lot more experience than you, you're gambling that you know better than them what's going to happen and you put a stake on and suggest that okay a currency at 50 cents is going to become 50.02. Um, instead of 49.96. So typically you have something called a stop loss, you'll put that on to say, if it goes too far the other way, get out, turn my bet into a loss. And if it goes the way you want, typically you wanna say, uh, sell now and actually instantiate the profit. So with all of these things, you have your bid, your bet. You also then have brokerage, which is the broker's fee for handling this for you. Because you're only a small player, you typically don't have access directly to a market. You have to have somebody do it for you, and they charge a fee for that, and brokerage. I don't pretend to understand specifically how the brokerage works. I've heard terms like pips and uh, all sorts of different things. If you don't know what that means and you've been asked to get into foreign exchange trading, stop now. <laughs> don't put your money at risk. You will lose it. Um, that, I think, is fairly easy to uh, understand. So much so that ASIC, Australia's regulator, or the Australian financial regulator, has a regulation, RG227, which is a duty of care for brokers who are connecting you with these markets to have done a proper assessment of you as a trader before providing you access to the market. Um, RG227, I believe if I can paraphrase my understanding of it and remember that I'm not a lawyer, I'm not a trader, I'm not anything other than just a lay person. RG227 says, if the person is not clearly understanding the risks, how quickly it can go bad, doesn't understand the margins when they might be forced to jump out of a trade rather than choosing to leave a trade because of leveraging or all these other terms that you may not understand either. 
um, that they're not fit to trade in this market and therefore shouldn't be provided access to the market. And providing access to a market to somebody with those shortfalls of understanding is a breach of a duty of care. I'll come back to that. So then the second component to the story is that my friend was put in touch with a broker, a person on the phone, who started to talk them through a trading program. Now the trading program is legitimate, the company is legitimate, they are registered with ASIC, they actually have a, a, an appearance of being a legitimate firm and by all intents and purposes they are a legitimate firm. If you know what you're doing and you understand probabilities and you are in front of the market, you could actually make money with one of these firms. Um, so the, the first question is, do you know what you're doing? Second thing is, whose advice are you following? Third thing is, are you risking a lot in a single transaction or day or whatever you'd like to say as your minimum breakup? So a couple of small trades were discussed and one made a small profit, one made a small loss. Um, and it was like, okay, see, this is easy, right? You're making money, you're losing money. You can you can put a bid on and you can make a hundred bucks. You put a bid on and you can lose a hundred bucks. And this was with a, a kitty of a thousand dollars, or I think maybe seven and a half thousand at this stage. Then the discussion went slightly differently, and it's like, okay, now we're going to go and look at the New Zealand dollar. And okay, what we're going to do is. We're going to put an each way bet. We're going to say, buy a position where the market goes up and we're going to buy a position where the market goes down. And then we'll only sell our market goes up position when the market has gone up and we'll only sell our market down position when the market goes down. So therefore, we can't lose. Anytime anybody tells you you can't lose, um, that's a red flag because essentially, you're putting an each way bet, but you're also having to pay a brokerage, plus you're also not realizing that there's a point at which you're gonna be forced to sell whether or not you want to sell, and that's what margins are all about. If you've only got a small stake, you can't cover a big loss, so you are basically taken out of the game before you have a chance to ride out that loss and have it return back to a profit. So what you think you are actually signing up for if you don't understand what you're doing is a losing streak because when it goes up you'll lose when it goes down you'll lose because each case turns out you're paying a brokerage in this particular instance the first two trades the brokerage was like $19 um, second brokerage was like $23 on a $150 gain $150 loss no worries once it got into the foreign exchange on the New Zealand dollar the brokerage jumped to $650 per transaction. So when you lost, decided to bail out, you lost your money, but you also lost $650 in broker fees. Went straight to the broker. So <laughs> you can see how very quickly, it doesn't matter which way you go, if you're not making $650 to cover the brokerage, you're already in a loss-making position. So all right, this person then got discussed how to progress ready for the night, you know, okay, I want to sort of stop now, I'm, I'm tired, I want to go to bed, am I going to lose anything? And the broker's like, oh, no, no, no. here's what we'll do, we'll get $22,500 and we'll put five bets each way. So five for the currency going up, five for the currency going down, and we'll just leave it set. friend asked if there was any risk to this, not really understanding the being forced to sell position when you're out of currency or out of, out of uh, margin, and was advised by the broker very poorly, um, yeah, go ahead, you'll be fine, mate, you'll be fine. Next morning, wake up, $90 in the account from $22,500. The losses that were incurred when the market went the other way meant that the account was stopped out, there was no liquidity, and the money was just extracted. In the wrap-up, 
of the $22,500, $6,500 of the loss was due to currency losses. $12,500 of it was due to brokerage. So the brokerage, more than half of the money that was put in. And then there was another figure that we didn't understand at the time called swap. So there was another $4,000 of swap. Now apparently swap is what you get charged as interest on your holdings over the turning of the day or, or I'm not a financial person, forgive me for not knowing the answer here. But essentially there was an interest charge as well. So of the 22 and a half, the lion's share went to the broker, the person giving the advice. All right, so you've lost all your money and you thought you knew what you were doing and you thought it wasn't a risk and you thought, oh, what could possibly go wrong? How could it possibly go bad in one day? Well, all right. In Australia, it appears that anyone trading in foreign exchange with an Australian office has some sort of duty of care to an investor. As I think I mentioned earlier, the duty of care is a RG 227, which is a regulation that states before allowing access to the market, you must have done, I think it's a 10 point questionnaire to assess the potential investor to make sure that they are actually fully cognizant of what risks they're coming up against so that they don't do something stupid. Um, so if you are in a situation where you've put some funds in and it seems like a fairly pretty common sort of thing that people do in the goal of making a quick buck, it's not a scam as such. This is all, the, the, the trading component is actually trading. You are actually losing your money in a market. You are paying brokerage. You are doing everything as far as how you would normally act if you were trading in a market. The particular thing that you want to be aware of if you're in a situation and you've lost your money is that there is a duty of care that the broker has before applying your trades to the market and putting your funds at risk. Um, I'll put a link down below to some of the cases that I've found where the financial industry ombudsman or AFCA I think they're called has been asked to mediate on cases. They've read through transcripts of phone calls, they've made a discussion or a determination based on the broker and the investor's state of mind um, and their duty of care, and in these cases has actually ordered a full refund of all of these invested funds, um, and in some cases has even ordered a um, additional funds for damages, emotional distress, non-financial losses, that sort of stuff. Um, and the orders appear to have been in the amount that was originally invested. One case was $250,000, an order for $250,000 to be returned, plus two or $3,000 uh, non-financial loss. Another one was around $22,000, $25,000. Anyway, I'll link those down below so you can have a read if this applies to you. Um, Finally, reiterating, I am not a financial advisor, I am not a lawyer, I do not fully understand this situation, but please, if you're in a situation where you've started to consider foreign exchange, you're looking for a quick buck or whatever, do your research first. There's ways you can actually play the market without putting your funds at risk. I believe there's training accounts, you can actually test your strategy. I found, looking at a number of videos to try and understand this situation, a guy called Jason Greyston, I don't know, can't recommend either way, but the words that he speaks makes sense. That is, you're trading based on a strategy. You've determined a strategy from research. Investing in foreign exchange is hard work. If you haven't done any hard work to understand what your strategy is, if you don't have a written down strategy as to how you're going to make your money, you shouldn't be trading. You are in a risk of losing everything. One of the things he speaks about is if you don't have a clearly defined risk and reward ratio, if you are risking more than 1% of your asset, your, your pool, your equity, you are doing something wrong. 
it's a long, slow, hard burn. First couple of years, you will lose as much as you win. Three, four, five years down the track, you'll actually start to develop a strategy. But test your strategy. Go back over the market over however, whatever period prior to then and actually see, if I apply this strategy, what would have been the outcome? Are there days that would have been better or worse? Are there points in time in the day that would have been better or worse? Are there charges that are incurred that would have been better or worse? If you're not doing these things, you're not fit to trade. You're not in a position where you understand what you're doing. So, again, I don't know anything, I can't recommend him as a person, but he speaks what sounds like sense. The other thing he speaks about when he's testing his theory is, only have one trade in play at a point in time. And this broker was suggesting to have five trades each way. That's a total of 10 trades in play. And that risked the entire financial uh, <laughs> equity that this person had, and it was a loss. And, and not only that, it fed directly to the broker's pockets $12,500. So the alarm bells. If it looks easy, if you think it's easy, if you reckon and you can just put another 20 grand in and make it back, you're gambling and if you're okay to lose the money that's fine somebody else in the market's going to pick it up and make a profit um, but it is a gamble and if you're happy gambling away make sure firstly that it's money you can afford to lose um, and realize that it's a gamble if you're not happy gambling if you can't afford to lose the money that you're staking stop stop immediately get some help get some financial advice um, and if you're in a situation where you've actually already gone down this track and already lost, um, and you're in Australia, there is a potential way to at least follow up your claim with AFCA. So I'll put their website down below. And hopefully, uh, if this has stirred up any issues or emotions or anybody, um, Lifeline, people like that, Gamblers Anonymous, there's a whole pile of people out there who can help. Um, I hope maybe, just hope maybe, that somebody will have taken the time to come back from the brink and, and not risk because of this. Um, but as I say, not financial advice, not legal advice, just hoping to keep people safe out there. Uh, lots of scams out there. This isn't a, what I would call a scam so much as a confidence trick. Um, you are doing legitimate trading. You are making the decision. You are the one pressing the buttons. You're being given access to something that by law in Australia, as I understand it, and again, not a lawyer, you shouldn't have access to. So you may have a legal recourse to getting your funds back. The other thing I saw is there's lots of companies out there when you first search these, these foreign exchange sites, there's millions of hits saying, foreign exchange, wonderful, wow. There's also lots of people saying, have you lost all your money? Come to us and we'll help you. It is expensive though. We have legal fees, we have all this sort of stuff, yada, yada. So people have lost all their funds. I can then foresee a point where they jump online to try and do a debt recovery with another firm who's just as about to take all your funds, doing all this legal work, and not necessarily guarantee any returns. You don't have a guarantee that this fund recovery firm you're going to have any power to do what you're wanting them to do other than take more of your money. And that's, I think, really the sad state of it is that I can see a situation where somebody would lose everything, then go even further into debt to try and recover it with another firm who isn't really genuinely trying to help recover. Your best bet is going to the government agencies, um, people like AFCA, ASIC, because these are federally regulated financial trades. You might have some luck there. Good luck. Hope this finds you well.